Hello, welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland. This is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Number 77, I do believe. So, thank you for joining me in the celebration of a series of uh, recordings that have clearly gone on way too long 77 that's a lot it's a lot imagine eating 77 Weetabix you know it's a lot of Weetabix or balancing 17 no 77 rather pizzas on your head Ah, but you may say, but are the pizzas still in the boxes? Because I suppose if you've got a good balance, the 77 pizzas on the boxes could potentially balance on your head. If they were out of the box, they take up a lot less room. It's still a lot though, isn't it? 77. I mean, if you got, I was going to say 77 beer mats, but I don't even know if beer mats exist anymore. I haven't been inside a pub or drunk beer in, in a pub for many a year. But it used to be a thing where you used to balance beer mats. Not you, but people. Um, and like flip them, flip beer mats and stuff. Oh, before I go any further, I should just uh, let you know to only, only, I say this in an exciting voice, only ever listen or watch this. When you can safely close your eyes. That sounds a bit uh, one of those like forced hypnotic voices, isn't it? Only ever listen to this when you can safely close your eyes because you'll realise that when your eyes start to close that you can really be more in touch with those feelings of comfort and relaxation and calmness that naturally overtake your body causing you to just drift, really drift deeper and deeper into a sense of Oh, such a profound sense of there, 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 there. So yeah, so I got excited there. So um, I had a friend who was the he was the what is it Guinness Book record breaker wasn't the only one obviously otherwise there wouldn't be a book with the there'd just be a <laughs> one name uh, but he was he was really into it proper he broke many records and they were all kind of uh, quite unusual records so they weren't none of them involved mountaineering or you know, those kind of things. And none of them were physical as in being the tallest or being the heaviest or, you know, being the strongest. So what he did was he had these really flexible hands 
and they used to call himself Dextrous Dean. And um, he held the world record. This is back in when I first met him, it was 1988. And he held, held the world record at that time for the most amount of beer mat catches. Uh, like this is in the world, he, he held the record. So the idea is you stack beer mats up on top of each other. I guess that's the what stacking means, I suppose. And then you put them onto the edge of a table and then you flick them with your hand facing downwards and then you catch them with your hand. And he held the world record for the most ever. And I think a few people broke his record and then he kind of claimed it back. So he had that record. Um, he also held the world record for the most amount of coins caught from an elbow so balancing coins on your elbow and then catching them with your hand and he was on television loads all over the world um, attending you know various different Guinness Book of Record events as well as breaking records he was on the Record Breakers which was a television show in England which Roy Castle used to host um, and then the, the lady is it Cheryl Fuzz not Fuzz Cheryl F she was from Bucks Fizz Cheryl 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 from Bucks Fizz she used to host it as well or after he I think she hosted it at the same time as him um, at one point so he also I remember going around there one day and he he was practicing on a dartboard, you know, just chucking darts at a dartboard and I said, What's that what are you doing? He said, Um chucking darts at a dartboard. I said, Yeah. He said, uh, he said he's practicing for a new world record. Oh, what's that? And it was the most amount of bullseyes in a minute or I don't know, whatever period of time uh, I don't know if he ever got the world record yeah, that's a bit of a it's not a great ending to a story is it that yeah someone it's like telling you about someone that's going to climb up a I don't know, up a mountain, I know, I don't know, I've got to figure out mountains at the moment. And going into the detail about all the preparations and and then not actually telling you how they got on. Although I've watched movies like that. Not about mountaineering because it's not really a, an interest of mine. Been a lot of snow in Europe. Lots and lots of snow. But the weather forecast in my country is saying no, mild, mild. Six degrees, seven degrees. It's cold, but still, it's not. It's not no, no, like snowy temperature, and. Um, no snow no it's not coming here yet it's not on its way yet and the first sign of snow in England and everything stops everything Air, I'm talking the every public transport service kind of gets interrupted uh you know, planes, trains, buses. I'm trying to think of some other 
public transport services. What is there? Buses, trains, planes, I suppose taxis, although it's not a it's a public service, but it's not a public transport. It's kind of is a little bit, isn't it? So taxi services, obviously, they're limited by the travelling abilities. I'm trying to think what other services, I suppose... If you live in the West End of London, you know, Oxford Street, you've got the, not wigwams, what are they called? The, you know, the bicycles, rickshaws, yeah, rick, rickshaws, so you've got those, that's like public transport, I suppose. Oh, I remember when I used to live in East London and you can't park anywhere. It's, it's just, it's the, the roads are just, they're not built, they're not built for traffic really. It's, especially the, the roads where the houses are, you know, it's, oh, it's, it's silly, but it's such a t tiny, tiny road, some of them. So I used to go to the taxi office, the cab office, mini cab office, whatever you want to call it. And um, I remember I was going up to, I think I was going up to, not Twickenham, Ealing. I was going up to Ealing because I'd met someone that lived in Ealing, a uh, girl. And I was visiting her. She was a student nurse. And she was from Hungary. And that's what she said when she called me up. She told me she was hungry. She wanted me to come over, so I did. And I... I remember I went to the cab office. And I said... Can I have a cab, please? I always wonder about that. I was like, why else would I be there? It's like when I phone up the pizza. I'm phoning for a pizza delivery, please. Like, why else would I phone them? It's, it's like, I wish there was another way to open the conversation. You know, it's like next time I phone a pizza and they answer Domino's, I say, yeah, they, this Brexit is just needs to be sorted out, isn't it? So, and they could say, yeah, so what do you want to order? And then, you know, or they could just say, well, what do you want to order? What do you want? Just get straight to it. Things of pizza places, they're just dodgy now. They're run by dodgy people, because they're franchises. By dodgy, I mean, not all of them, just my local one seems to be, it's all about money. Like, they kind of make up their own prices. It used to cost 10 pound for a large pizza to be delivered to me. Now it's, what, about 19 pound? Don't do special offers, don't do, you know, it's like it's an inconvenience to deliver me. I realise this might not be the right place to be moaning about pizza places, but. Last time I spoke to a pizza, this is last week, or. No, well, yeah, kind of earlier in the week. So I wasn't able to eat because I wasn't well. And I thought maybe, maybe, maybe if I order a pizza, 
that'll give me some kind of an appetite because you know it's one of my favourite little snacks every now and then I don't I probably get a couple of deliveries a year maybe of pizzas because it's too expensive now and you know so I got it got a delivery actually when it got here I couldn't I had I think two slices and then just you know you don't want to hear the rest but yeah it's uh, put it this way the, the the pizza had sweet corn on I'm just that's just going to give you a clue what happened pretty much directly after I ate the, the pizza but that's just because I was a, a bit unwell the um, I phoned up the pizza place and I said I'd like can I order yeah I think I said can I order delivery please and the way it works in this country if you're from America listening in it's very different here we are very uh, <clears throat> oh I need to have a drink very um The opposite to customer based so if you go into a shop you'll more likely find that the people serving in the shop act like they're doing you a favor by selling you stuff the delivery people act like they might be doing you a favor by actually taking your credit card and taking your money in some ways some companies actually make it complicated to pay bills make it difficult to actually give them your money when that's all you want to do do you have to run through hoops and be on the phone for ages and you know all I want to do is give you money can't you just take my money please I know that might seem a bit alien to some people. You know, that are used to good customer service, but we don't really have that here in this country. I'm sure we have individuals, that are, you know, but it's it's not really about customer service here. It's about, uh, I think a lot of companies just getting the people that they can employ at the cheapest rate so you know you get someone under 18 and it costs like 2 or 3 pound less an hour to employ them and yeah it's just uh, I think that's kind of unfair why just someone that's been working, especially if they've left school, they're working, doing exactly the same job as somebody two years or three years older, get paid three pounds an hour less. That's ridiculous, isn't it? I mean, that's what, that's 40 hours, that's four, eight, £120 a week less that's £6,000 a year less just because of their age being younger wow wow Just trying to think how I got here. I never get to talking about salaries and wages and pizzas. Ugh. I'm probably never going to eat another pizza. 
I know that I'm never ever going to have another tea cake ever. So you know, it's it's quite strange. My uh, my taste buds have somewhat changed the last week due to the uh, whatever it is I had. My uh, yeah, I, I I'm never going to be able to. I don't think even look at a hot cross bun ever again. I can't eat them. Can't just the idea of them. Uh, what else? Which would be quite good actually. Imagine it's a great way to get rid of a um, a habit or worse even. You know something that's kind of costing loads of money and. An addiction or something like that. Um, I don't know, smoking or whatever. By just being, just feeling absolute disgust for that thing. Yeah. I've been thinking about this year. So I went to bed about 8 o'clock last night, just after 8. And I've just woken up about half 2 this morning. And instead of just staying in bed, I thought, um, I'll just get up. Had a little bit of breakfast. I might as well make a, make a recording it will take a few hours to to till it's ready to be uploaded anyway as a video. It usually takes what about, probably about three hours to to render from a video because it's an hour long once the editing's done and everything. And um, see how good the editing is on this. It's because I did a massive sneeze just about 10 minutes in and that's going to be edited out and you will never know it was there never trust what you listen to it's so easy to edit audio obviously you could hear what I'm saying but you don't know what I've said between words just like then I could have just got into a rant about caterpillars and you never would have known because I just edited it out. Again, there was that pause. I could have said loads of stuff just then. I could have talked about hats and bats and how embarrassed I am that I can only think of two things that rhyme with with hats or well, one thing bats and hats tats splats mats oh you know what I didn't mention this this is exciting um, I had a knock on my door Probably two or three days ago. Probably Thursday, I reckon. Yeah. And I thought, oh, okay. I answered the door, what do you want? And the lady said, it was a lady, she said, uh, E sorry to disturb you. I said that's that's okay. What um what do you want? Well first of all, just to let you know I'm f I don't know, she she didn't talk like that, I'll just do a normal first of all, 
Let me tell you that I I am from the council. Uh, no, she just said uh, she was from the council, and um, and they were cleaning the or clearing the hallways of all the council blocks for health and safety. And she said, "Is there anything that you that, that you need here?" And I said, no, enough, it's enough, I've got nothing left outside. I went out about two hours later, I think maybe to take Andre for a walk or to put some rubbish out. Or maybe I could have, might have just gone out to have a little, like, sit in the garden, which probably I didn't do. But there was, there was something, I went out anyway, briefly. And the hallways were clear, but not clear of items, although there wasn't any items really on my landing. But they'd cleared all of the recycle stuff out, all the boxes where the recycling uh, glass, the food recycling, um, cans, all that stuff. Gone. I took all of them away. They even took doormats away. I thought, what What on earth was that all about? This have been some kind of doormat incident? And I suppose, as I say that, I can imagine there probably could be, but some people like to have a doormat. I mean, other than just to sort of welcome guests, which I wouldn't have on my doormat because I don't want any guests, but the it's nice to wipe the mud off your shoes, you know, just to practically, you know, especially... If you've been walking your ferret in the mud, in the fields, or the park, or treading through our neighbours' gardens. So it's, I've took them all away. So I'm going to try and spread my mud all over the floor, make it ever so muddy. Yeah, that's going to be my new thing. That's kind of a, an unusual thing, considering how important the news keeps coming on about recycling and how important it is that we should do it. And my friend asked them what what we're supposed to do and he he was told we just stick stuff in black bags and just chuck it out as rubbish the thing is the rubbish that goes into black bags in a lot of areas it does in my area they when they take the black bags they actually split the black bags open And they recycle anyway from the black bags. What a horrible job. But it's actually done. It's by hand. Uh, I know someone that used to do it. And uh, what a horrible job. And uh, that's all I can say. It's got to be... He did say that it's amazing the things people chuck out. But... uh, I imagine it's also amazing the amount of things that things that people chuck out that's also mixed in with animal feces, you know, so I know mine is if I chuck stuff away I've got Andre's paper and uh anything else I chuck away, so I wouldn't want to go through any of those black bags. 
I'll be honest, if I dropped a pound coin into one of my black bags, you know, the, the bin by accident, I would not go into the bin to get it out. That pound would be lost. A five pound note, I might have a rummage, but not for a pound coin. Ooh. So yeah, I've so, oh, I answered the phone to, uh, not the door, the door, not the phone, to the council person. And when she said, from the council, we're clearing all the hallways and you don't need to recycle anymore. I thought, <laughs> I thought, um, I thought, oh, I wish I knew I was, I was going to end this, this story. And I said to her, oh, I'm not, not very well. She said, oh, I'm, I'm very sorry to, to hear that. Mm-hmm. I hope you um, feel better, better soon. I said thanks, thanks. Uh, bye, bye. Bye. So yeah, that was the uh, wasp lady. She had, she had a she did, she was actually had a a beehive in her mouth. She didn't. A wasp wasp a beehive. Uh, doesn't have to make sense. Just has to be pointless. Which is what this is. This is kind of like the equivalent of, there was this thing years ago, I think it was early 2000s, because I had some, and this was, no, I'm not talking about the last time I had intimacy, I'm talking about the, uh, this thing, it was juggling, but it was a book with some juggling balls, But the idea is that you drop the balls at certain times. The idea was that to take us away from this idea of perfection and needing to do things correctly. So I suppose in a sense this is a similar thing. Because this complete nonsense that sometimes may flop out of my mouth will break apart some of that that need that that kind of oh things should be a certain way things should be this way things should be that way Ooh, no, that uptightness of limitation and actually things are what they are they don't necessarily have to be a certain way and to be able to have that I don't even know if the word is flexibility really just to have that thought, the idea of possibilities. That's why I think that it's so easy to learn about something to be really knowledgeable about something if 
you only listen or read books or listen to people or spend time with people that agree with you. Because life is a lot easier that way. Life is so easy, much easier, if you're around people that agree with you. People that have the same, the same belief system and the same ideas and follow it to the letter. Without any exception, without any interruption, without any any contradiction and without any kind of anything that would possibly interfere with that stuckness of that concrete belief that this is the only way without any challenge And life could be simple. So simple and easy. Very little thinking involved because the thinking's already been done for you. And you're good because you you can have limited vocabulary as well so you can just say the same words over and over again and laugh at the same things every time and yeah it's great brilliant ooh ah mm. or or You can look at the other point of view. You can study things and opinions that you disagree with. You can be friends with people that do things that you disagree with or that you just don't really relate to and have a different belief system, a different religious outlook and that's challenging to be around someone where you can't be right because neither of you can be right when you have opposing views because it just turns into just being a, a view a belief, an opinion. That's it. I think the good thing about that is it starts to melt the strength of that limiting belief. Starting to realise that actually someone else feels just as strongly about that thing And they seem quite happy. Or maybe they seem happier. And they get to know people as well that don't have any of those hang ups religious or spiritual. People that are able to accept reality. And at the same time live a purposeful life. And 
that could be a challenge for people that you know need need to have something external to believe in when some people can just trust in doing what feels right to them I know someone that is very into uh, I'll be careful how I word this very into women's rights and but at the same time very kind of anti-male for you know in quite an extreme way and searches out books by professors and you know a feminist literature searching out books which fit in with that belief system that she holds which allows that to get stronger because it's an educated belief and opinion based on education and reading scholarly articles And then it's not balanced, though, is it? I kind of think, you know, if you're going to read stuff, if you're going to study a subject, maybe see the opposing view as well. And it might seem weird, but if you're going to study feminism extreme feminism then study some misogynism as well read scholarly articles written by men professions you know professors and about you know putting women down and all that stuff which I'm sure there are loads as there are books by women doing the same to men so that's how I would look at it that's how I would be interested because I'm interested in feminist I'm interested in I'm interested but at the same time I find it annoying and I dislike personally any extreme view I'm a, a very opposed to personally you know, in my own life for myself that is not for other people it's up to them what they do but for myself I'm opposed to any extreme view I'm not an extremist in any way and extreme beliefs Uh, generally don't seem to lead anywhere nice I find and I've, I've met lots of people with extreme views on all kinds of angles racist uh, sexuality all kinds of things like that and 
again it's I think it's because it's more comfortable for them because then they can be around people that have those views they can be part of a club maybe meet up and eat biscuits Kit Kats and coffee and maybe that's what they need because I suppose anyone with like extreme views if they've got friends Are just regular friends that don't share these extreme views with them. They may they might need to hide their extreme view. And then maybe worry that one day it'll pop out. And then they may lose the friend. So perhaps it is easier for them to just get together with other extreme view people. sometimes find it's unusual to think that someone with extreme I haven't got to even mention we've all got different we all know the different kind of people someone with an extreme view would be getting together just having something to eat some pizza watching a bit of telly Yet carrying around that that thing. So I like the idea of my sessions, my recordings, the hidden hidden agenda. It's a little hidden agenda, and it's not really hidden because I've mentioned it many times over the years my agenda is to relax that part of you that holds these strong limiting views and opinions and beliefs and starts to crumble them I know some people might think, oh, but I want to keep all my opinions and views. What about like, you know, where would my morals come from? Morals do not come from opinions and views. Morals come from being a human being and having a brain that works. Being able to tell the difference between right and wrong is something that we naturally know. Those that don't abide by those rules choose not to. It's not that they have no choice, they choose not to, generally. There might be a few that really, their brains aren't working in a way that's needed. I guess those people just need a little bit of help to be relieved from that situation. So morally, we know not to steal. It's not. It's not. It's like even a small child knows that. We know not to hurt each other. 
a small child knows that it's not that complicated we don't need laws for it we know we all know So that's why, that's kind of one of my goals in my life is to eradicate as many, blast away as many limiting beliefs, opinions and ideas and, you know, any of that crap, I want it out. Want it out, want it gone. Whether it's limitations on myself, putting limitations on others, disliking things because they're different, or because, you know, things like that. I want that gone. It doesn't matter. I don't need that in my life. I don't think any of us do. I think that's what freedom is for me. Not that I'm free, but you know, I think moving towards that is giving up on those limiting, which I forget limiting beliefs. Just just beliefs, extreme views. Even if it's a view where, you know, everybody, everybody should be vegan. Everybody should go to the gym and be healthy so they live longer. It might be with good intention. But you're going to be very unhappy if you spend your life expecting everybody to go to the gym and getting angry when people don't and having arguments with people and you know just knowing that you're going to spend the rest of your life never able to be right but needing to be it's not a great place is it to be really Fifty three minutes in. So yeah, that's what I like to do, I like to do different things. I can talk about the internal design of a greenhouse I once went into twenty three years ago on a Tuesday afternoon about three twenty five. I can talk about lots of different stuff. I can make stuff up. I can talk about who knows what. I can also talk about things that have a degree of meaning to me. And I think with the Brexit thing in my country, which is basically just Britain exiting Europe. Brexit, oh, I don't like that word. <laughs> and um, it's. I 
I don't know, it's uh, it seems to have allowed the population to let their true feelings be known, to let the extremist beliefs out, like it was uh, in some way acceptable to verbalise these things publicly. And it was, uh, yeah, I found it a bit not the most helpful thing. Interesting. Interesting when you realise that actually perhaps the society hasn't really progressed as far as once was thought. So instead of people being accepting and open with each other, they're just putting up with each other in some situations. This is saying in England that the English are very tolerant towards newcomers to the country. Doesn't tolerant mean putting up with something that you don't like? Isn't doesn't that what tolerant means? Tolerant putting up with something that is unpleasant, but you just don't do anything about it and don't say anything about it. You just keep a stiff upper lip and make the best of a bad situation. That seems to be what the word tolerant means. It's not welcoming, is it? It's a big difference between the English people are very welcoming to newcomers to the country. That's a different sentence, isn't it? They're very open, very welcoming, very loving towards. No, it's a, we're very tolerant. Even if you say it nicely, very tolerant. I mean, that's the thing, it's, it's a, like a put down. When someone says, oh, oh, you two, you're good friends, are you? And one of you says, oh, we tolerate each other. Yeah, this turned out being a hypno chats. No, a hypnotic buffet. But I can't even bother to change the title. <sighs> Just shows I've still got a few hypnotic buffets in me. I just didn't know it was coming. I didn't know. So yeah, sorry about that. If you if you do listen to my stuff, those little uh, extremist views and beliefs and stuff may start to crumble a little bit. Yeah, things look different. Things feel different. And. Uh, You know when things kind of crumble away and let's say if you're if you're watching a building crumble and it's kind of crumbling in front of you you might be a distance away safe you know safely but 
you know, every rock that falls down or every brick that falls out of that building it causes dust and it kind of oh, makes you cough a bit, maybe gets in your eyes. With the belief system, it has a different, system, different way. Once these uh, extreme views and extreme beliefs start to crumble, instead of getting dust, which causes you to cough or uh, gets in your eyes, which causes irritation, it sends off something different, which actually it kind of causes kindness, it's like a kindness comes off which you start to feel like a, a kindness slash love uh, openness sort of get a taste of uh, what you can have more of actually and that kindness is, is real and that that sense of looseness and relaxation and it's real stuff it's, it's, it's not just put, put on or temporary it's actually it's part of you it's transformational and the more those self-limiting beliefs start to crumble the clearer your mind becomes less clouded with you know problems from the past or thinking that this should be that way and you should feel this way about stuff and other people should act a certain way your need to be right starts to re reduce There's an old saying, you can't be, can't be happy and right. You need to choose. If you want to be happy, give up the need to be right. It's not my saying. Although, I'm going to pretend it is. Yeah, it's mine. I have a dream. No, I don't. Before I do another, <laughs> another one of my sayings. Sayings. I like the idea of the crumbling beliefs causing a reaction of feeling good, feeling relaxed, feeling happy, calm. Loose and open. If you think about it, there was a time when you could, you know, metaphorically run around and had no beliefs. You know, not really, no, no extreme beliefs. You know, and then you, you know, you kind of learned these things from outside, and you stood and more mud was applied on the floor 
And at first it was just a heaviness. The mud from the floor was just dragging your feet to the floor. It was a bit heavy. It's like, oh, I've got to be this, I've got to be that. I've got to be a certain way. I need to look a certain way. I need to act a certain way. I need to uh, have these qualifications or I need to believe in this religion or I need to believe in this and blah 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 and then it turns to it just gets a bit too hard to keep picking your feet up from the mud so you just settle in it's comfortable everything's kind of planned you've got your belief systems they're all there And then the mud just starts to get deeper and deeper and you end up up to your waist in that mud. And you're going nowhere. That's it. Until the mud starts to crumble. The mud starts to crack. And the wind can blow that dust from that mud off of your body. But at the same time, soaking into your body that healing, calmness, that openness and freedom kindness and love and just allow that to continue crumbling away bit by bit day by day beliefs that are no longer necessary and those can beliefs they can be something that you might have even forgotten a belief that maybe someone told you that you couldn't do something Someone said, oh, you can't do that. And you believe them. And it's buried, it's in in that belief bag of poo that's been surrounding you. And you just forgot about it. And you've been living your life as if it's true. But it's not. When that belief appears again and crumbles you realise that actually you can do that thing that you believed for so long you weren't able to and then you can ponder upon that idea that somebody else maybe said something to you and you believed it like their words were important in some way and you may wonder why did you allow yourself to give someone else power over you when the only person that has any power over you is you things start to change day by day you 
you start to realize that you're more than you ever realized. You can do more than you ever believed possible. You can be happier than you ever imagined. So that's the end of this Let Me Bore You to Sleep. A bit of a different version of this thing that I do. And uh, I will see you next time. Bye.